हेलो गुड इवनिंग एवरी वन हैप्पी इंडिपेंडेंस डे टू ऑल ऑफ यू सो कैन यू सी मी एंड इज माई वॉइस इज क्लियर टू ऑल ऑफ यू Yes. Good evening, Akshar. Happy Independence Day. Yes. Good evening, Aman. So yesterday we were actually we we took took a class on MSQ. Good evening, uh, Raj. L- let let others join. We will just. Uh, wait for a few minutes that's also what you did in uh, today's today wh- whatever you have completed or whatever uh, the studies you have done uh, will be almost uh, helpful if you see this session the mcq pattern the one uh, which they have involved in our uh, gate 2021 so for uh, msq session we have uh, we are uh, following this we are actually initiated a series so that the students will be aware how the MC- msq questions will be coming and especially if you will see please make sure that this is not the only type of question they will be asking in the gate 2021 they have already mentioned that mcq msq and all uh, that filling gaps that nat type numerical answer type all the three type of the questions will be asked isn't it so let us start with that uh, today's session first of all as i told you today's session is on structural analysis and uh, railway so in a meanwhile if you like the session please subscribe and uh, press the like button and i welcome all of you on grade up channel of youtube for the gate session and here my experience with 8 plus years and masters from ic bangalore i have area of expertise in such material structures railway airport and an xis master faculty there is a grade up super as you know already that will provide you the unlimited access to all structured live courses and mock tests so this is the right time and it will be available this launch offer will be available till 18th of august so till 18th of august suppose if you will take a subscription for suppose 12 month so 12th month subscription if you will take you will get a 2x of validity that will be validated for the 2 years isn't it so if you will take for 1 year it will be, uh, be validating for 2 years and uh, you will get a 20% discount also in that so that is one of the best deal and those who will who whoever will register will get a chance to get you know prizes so worth rupees of 25 lakh rupees prizes uh, distributing all over the india and uh, in that prize you can see laptops and mobiles are available so i i just uh, ask all of you who are who were is interested you can just go and join as you know in a grade up you will you will be getting the you know structured course from uh, all experienced faculties and for ssc mega mock challenge you have uh, on august 8 you have test series and uh, on august 15th you have uppsc assistant engineer that is the uttar pradesh public service commission more than 700 seats i think are available so that that is also good those who are preparing for that it's better you go for uh, some mock test which will provide some uh, you know idea that how much you have prepared and where you are standing there is a rank up course which will be coming and uh, for that including myself all other respected and experienced faculties are involved and you can join this course as this is a fast track revision course in grade up so where in this rank up course we will be covering more than 350 plus of hours live classes practice questions and study notes full length mock test daily test subject wise and for any other query you can contact at this number for any other query you can contact at this number so first of all i welcome each and every one in grade up youtube channel and uh, i once again say uh, welcome all of you and tell that happy independence day f- uh, today so let's start our topic that is msq so multiple select question yesterday already we have seen for survey and airport today we will see for structure and uh, railway so this is uh, the first question for you so write down in a comment box what will be the answer for this which of the zero member force in the following truss 
so this is the truss you can see here there is a support if there is a support one side simple support and another side a roller support with this loading condition can you tell me which of them are true which of them are true <coughs> just write down in a comment box and which of them are true okay so i am getting one answer that is b b then what what else so here for solving this type of problem first of all actually you if it is a msq question if it is a msq you need to check all the members that is the you know kind of thing you have to do in a msq type of question now if you have mcq it's very easy if suppose if you will try for this member a and you will get an answer there is no need to check all the options isn't it so you need to check all and at the same time what i will suggest that those who have not studied go on grade up app on grade up app and i have conducted one uh, you know i have actually taken one class that is zero member force zero member force please go there and just see that video you will be easily able to calculate the zero member force to calculate zero member force three things at least you need to remember one force single force cannot exist so this single force cannot exist isn't it they should be equal to zero and the second one that if two member forces are meeting or any two forces are meeting at a point then if they are not opposite and equal in magnitude they also cannot exist so these these two also must be equal to zero and the third one there is only one possibility if the two members are meeting they must be with the same magnitude and in opposite direction then only they can exist otherwise this this type other type of the members two members cannot exist now the third one is that if you have a three forces meeting at a point if you have a three forces meeting at a point three forces meeting at a point what will happen if the two forces are in a line the third one must be equal to zero so if you'll go to that grade up app i have already explained how it's uh, happening and uh, how to uh, how to see the things so just remember all this uh, three conditions and it will be convenient for you now here if i will try just see one by one here the third condition as i have given here if the two forces are in a line the third must will be equal to zero so here three member forces are meeting can you see that and at point b at joint b so you can see see you have to see that eg no jm and di but let us see all the members we will check one by one so at joint b how many members how many forces are meeting at joint b so if you draw the joint b so here if you draw the joint b so quickly we'll see this is force that is bf and this is force bg and this one is a reaction this force is a reaction so three forces are meeting and there is no possibility not the two forces are in a line so you cannot find a zero member force from point b now if you see this uh, point f please come to the point f so if you'll come to the point f <coughs> here the two member forces are meeting here two member forces are meeting that is bf and be so uh, fe so the third one will be zero that's fine if this is zero now you can move to bh that bh bg and gh are meeting here bg if you see the point g if you see the point g if you see the joint g here then here four members forces are meeting but already the one is zero already the one is zero so what you can do here you can say that okay two forces are meeting at a joint they are in line so third one will, will be also equal to zero similarly here if you will come okay you cannot say anything because at this point d at this point d there is a load so if you will draw the diagram at point d you have one force like this another force is like this and one force is like this 
and another one is like this so this is one member that is a this is joint d this is joint d you have i at this location you have e at this location and this is w so four forces are meeting at one joint so you cannot apply any of the three cases whatever i have <coughs> given here so if this is not going to be zero obviously you can you cannot say anything about this so only two members are zero at this location so now this de will obviously not be equal to zero so this is not zero member force sorry di now jm we will check about jm so now eg and o so eg eg is zero so this one is correct no and jm if you will see no and jm so just check it out so similarly here if you will try two members are meeting in a line so one is zero here once again the this to jk and kc jk and kc are in a line so third one will be also equal to zero here only three member forces are meeting as fourth one we have already made it a zero member force so that is why this is also zero now come from the top you can see that no those who are seeing this please see no no so no is like you know an and mn an and mn these two members are in a line so no will also equal to zero did you get that now coming to this point that o coming to the joint o ao and oj these two are in a line although four forces were meeting at joint o four forces were meeting at joint o but the on four forces were meeting if you draw the o four forces were meeting at o but this one already we have made zero this one already we have made zero that is n o so only now three forces are meeting at this joint and and the third condition which i have given the th the third condition which i have given here that is the two forces if they are meeting so ao and oj if they are meeting and they are in a line so third one that is om will also be equal to zero now can you see the joint m if you will see the joint m this all member forces are zero here so joint m has only nm nm and then mc i will see the uh, comment box also just give me a second so this is nm and m nm and ml or mc you can say ml here only mj only mj is here because all other members are zero so mn mn sorry mn and ml is in a one line so mj will also be equal to zero can you see that so from here now you can say which one is zero member force and which one is not did you get that so if you have any doubt please let me know otherwise uh, we will move so no is also a zero member force and jm is also a zero member force so this will be the answer abc those who have given abc aditya chakravarti is right uh, anush money is all uh, money uh, c option is also correct you have given only a and b divyansh a and b c is also correct see jm where is jm jm this is also a zero member force so a b c all the three are correct so we'll move to another one if you have any doubt please let me know now coming to this problem coming to this problem just you uh, ignore this uh, this is a vertical just you consider this as a 90 degree consider this as a 90 degree here now can you tell me for this problem which one is true <coughs> what is that aman di what are you asking di do you have any doubt in previous slide please let me know j is maybe zero vijay vasanta j a where is j a where is j a j a no j a i cannot say anything about j a now i cannot say anything about j a now and j is not here in this option j is not uh, in their option now can you tell me here which one uh, which of them is true which of them maybe is or are now msq we cannot say it's is or maybe are maybe only one is true maybe all the four can be true all the three or two can be true so just take a one minute and uh, then i will come
डी ऑप्शन इन क्वेश्चन नंबर वन और क्वेश्चन नंबर टू अमन इन क्वेश्चन नंबर वन और क्वेश्चन नंबर टू so here all the four are true siddharth ghosh raj is also telling all the four are true let me check first okay so here you have already that is fbc is 57.4 57.74 so we will check one by one we will check one by one here so here first of all you have this one the two forces are meeting at so here can you see that cd and de are meeting in a line so third one will be equal to zero so what i told you in the third condition that if the three forces are meeting the third one will be zero so here dc and de are in a line so this one will be zero that's all now can you see there if two member forces are meeting if the two member forces are meeting then they cannot exist so these two also must be equal to zero so ab ac and and bd must be equal to zero so we have c we have here now ab and uh, ac and which one bd equal to zero so if you will remove all this what kind of diagram you will be getting here so now you have only you have only this diagram can you see this that's all so 100 kilo newton is acting here and 100 kilo newton is acting here in this truss and all other member forces are zero here this is also 60 degree and that one is also 60 degree and the at center if you'll see you have 2 meter here and 2 meter here which is given now you you can see here now what is the option here fbd they have given zero so fbd is zero correct obviously this bd will be zero isn't it now if you see fab and fac so fab and fac these two are also correct isn't it so option c is also correct now what you must look here that fbc and fbe they are asking now if you see from this diagram this is c this is b and this is e if they are asking about now you need to check fbc and fbe so bc and be now this is a symmetrical one what i will tell if you will calculate any one of you know any one bc or be it will be convenient that okay whatever is coming for bc will be for same be so for a symmetrical one you can just uh, calculate only one so now you can consider 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 joint c now if you will consider joint c so it's a, now a joint problem and before considering it as you know this is symmetrical figure so for 100 kN you will get a reaction of 50 kN at both support you will get a reaction of 50 kN at both support and suppose if it has not been given the figure is not symmetrical the structure is not symmetrical or the loading is not symmetrical then what you need to do you need to calculate the reaction first okay after calculating the reaction so consider joint c here if you consider the joint c draw the fbd that is free body diagram for joint c so joint c you have one reaction that is 50 kN and this one also i am just considering a tensile member force the force that is here this point is c and this is b so here this is b so i am just considering this as a fcb <coughs> fcb or bc whatever as a, in a tensile mo mode so is a tensile force i am considering right now this is a 60 degree and there is one more force here that is if you so this force also i am considering as a tensile force which is fce and this is 60 degree so take the component of these two forces take the component of the force that fcb if you will take the component of fcb now 
take summation of f y equal to zero, summation of f y equal to zero. <coughs> if you take summation of f y forces of y equal to zero, I can write it down here. This is now f c b. Is it uh, visible for all of you? Sine sixty degree, and this will be f c b cos sixty degree. So you have two forces in this direction and one here. So if you take f summation of f y zero, what will happen? F c b sine sixty degree plus fifty kilo newton will be equal to zero. As the joint is in equilibrium, this must be true. So if you calculate from here, you will get F C B equals to minus fifty seven point seven four kilo newton. Now, if you get the value of F C B as minus fifty seven point seven four, obviously the value of uh, F B also will be fifty seven point seven four. Now you can ask me, sir, this is a minus value. How I can say that F B C is fifty seven point seven four kilo newton? So, dear students, this minus sign is coming why? Because I have considered this. For the this member F B C, I have considered that this is under tension, under tension. But if this negative sign is coming, we can say that the magnitude of the load is 57.74 kilonewton. The magnitude of the axial force is 57.74, and the member is under compression. That's all. Member is under compression. So this is this must be true. The option A is also true, and option D is also true. please uh, ask me if you have any doubt in this problem <coughs> so we'll just move for the next problem we'll move for the next problem this one here in this problem just i will see a comment box if you have any comment please let me know or at least you write down if you are enjoying the session please write down in a comment box if really you are enjoying the session how to solve this problem in method of section that also you can do method of section you can also apply see once if you can identify zero member forces just a second i'll just answer for vijay or who was asking that just a second okay vijay so vijay uh, see method of section is for either you do joint method or section method you, and especially i will ask you you go to grade up app grade up app and you will find a method of section the magic of method of section in that in that name i have taken one class so that will be there so you please go to first of all zero member forces then method of section and please learn it from there and last thing i will tell you whatever the structural format or structural loading you will get in examination that depends on your logic see especially i will talk about the gate gate is why they are telling that is a graduate aptitude exam why it's graduate uh, they are writing every time aptitude you need to know what is joint method what is section method but where you will apply and how you will apply that is your mind will tell and this will come if you learn good and if you have a you know practice good practice in that question so it always depends it's always it's always depends now you can apply the section method maybe it will take more time because once you are able to find out the zero member forces only one joint one joint will be sufficient to answer the all two options the rest of the two options so then why you are going to apply section method did you get my point so method of section also you can apply there is no problem so in this uh, in uh, can you just tell me in this one all member of given frame have same fragile rigidity and length which of the following is are true just can you tell me i'll just see the comment box whatever you are writing there okay 3 uh, a b a and b is correct you are telling right what about c and d that is the beauty of msq you just cannot escape with these answers you need to check all the four you need to check all the four please check all the four options and tell me is c and d both are true or not so for that i will just 
just to try it and then I will tell you what, what you need to do here. Because for that you need a lot of information. So those who are practicing just see here, just see here. To solve this problem, first of all you need to know what is stiffness. You need to know what is stiffness. So stiffness is simply a force, force or you can say moment required for unit displacement or rotation. Displacement or rotation you can note it down no problem this is the only simple thing you can remember that is a force requirement for unit rotation or moment requirement for unit rotation force requirement for unit displacement that is nothing but a stiffness and then you need to know that when you were uh, solving the deflection problem in if you have a propped cantilever beam if you are applying a moment at this location if you are applying the moment at this location you will get you will get theta as ml by 4 ei ml by is it visible yes ml by 4 ei at this b here and if you have this structure you are applying the load the theta at this location will be ml by 3 ei now as per the stiffness and uh, that uh, definition so what is the stiffness of any member joint that is force required or moment required for unit rotation so now if theta if theta is 1 if you want to get what is the moment requirement for theta equal to 1 then here m will be simply 4 ei by l and here m will become 3 ei by l so now from here you need to understand that if far end is hinge, if far end is hinge, then your stiffness is 3 EI by L. Sorry. If far end is hinge, then your stiffness is 3 EI by L. And if your far end is fixed, then your stiffness is M equals to 4 EI by L. That is the stiffness is 4 EI by L. Did you get that? And after just to note it down just to note it down and uh, for from here you can do one more thing the, now you can solve this problem now you can solve this problem so first of all tell me this the moment applied at this location so now in first first option and second option he is not asking about the moment he is just asking what is the stiffness so stiffness of the member BA so stiffness of the member BA obviously if the far end is far end is fixed so stiffness will be 4 EI by L. So first one is correct. Isn't it? First one will be correct. Now rotation at joint B. Now he is asking about the rotation. So B has a three member that is BA, BC and BD. BA, BC and BD. Come on. So here BA, BC and BD. BA has what is the stiffness of the BA? If I write it down here. Oh, I think. So here, now I think you can see, so at the stiffness at B, so I will just write it down. So yes, of B A, if you write it down, which is 4 E I by L, because the far end is fixed. Now, if you write down for K of B C, it will be 3 E I by L. Why? Because the far end is hinge. Now, if you talk about the member BD, the stiffness will be, the stiffness will be, that is KBD will be, will be, the far end is fixed, so it will be 4 EI by L. So, this information was much needed to do all these things. So, now if you have a stiffness for the, for the member BA, BC and BD, so if all the members are joined, rigidly at this location if you are applying the moment so if you are there rigidly attached at joint b <clears throat> what will happen so 
together what is the stiffness at joint b so stiffness at joint b i will just delete the first one those who have already noted down the first one i'll just delete and write it i will write it down so total total stiffness at joint b so stiffness that is stiffness at joint b simply you need to add all the three that is 4 ei by l 3 ei by l and 4 ei by l and it will be coming around 11 ei by l so this 11 ei by l is what this 11 ei by l what Mo this is moment required moment required for unit rotation so from here you can say you can see when i have removed this theta in fact i can write it down in terms of this theta if i i want to write i can write it here isn't it if i want to write i can write the theta b at this location can you see this can you see this just see this one the one which here i am writing can you see i have taken theta b equal to 1 if i will not take theta b equal to 1 the theta will be at this location so theta will be ml by 4 ei isn't it theta will be ml by 4 ei and <clears throat> ml by 4 ei so similarly you can say that you can say that here if 11 ei by l i can say this is what nothing but a moment this is what nothing but a moment required for unit rotation so m is nothing but 11 ei by l is what nothing but theta at b but theta at b is if one then it becomes stiffness so from here if you wanted to know what is the rotation that theta b it will become see it will become theta b will become that is ml by e i ml by 11 e i can you see there can you see that so from stiffness definition only you will be able to understand what is the rotation at the joint b so rotation at joint b will be ml by 11 e i can you see this one please let me know if you have any doubt so theta b from here if you see ml divided by 11 ei so this option is also correct now come to the another por uh, another portion that is moment at c moment at c is equal to m by 6 this is very uh, shitty because here if you see here if you see here this is a hinge support for a hinge support for a hinge support there will not be any there will not be any kind of moment it doesn't have any resisting moment production so it cannot provide any moment so at c it, it, it must be equal to zero so this is wrong this is wrong now come to the moment at a moment at a so just note it down those who are taking this note down so moment at a what will be the moment at a obviously that will be 0 0.18 m and for that what we need to do we need to calculate the distribution factor we need to calculate the distribution factor yes it's a roller there is no problem roller is a hinge with slider that's all the support is see uh, vishnu you are not understanding this i am talking about this this is a roller support but roller is also a hinge don't go behind name try to understand if you will provide roller if you whether you provide fixed or whatever I, I was just talking about this location as it has a hinge at this location this member can rotate about the hinge did you get that so if it can rotate about this hinge there will be no resisting moment which it can provide is it okay now <clears throat> so now to get a moment at a to get a moment at a you need to calculate the distribution factor and the distribution factor to calculate the distribution factor those just see here if you have uh, seen just i will uh, delete all this i will delete all this uh, and then we'll just calculate the distribution factor here so to calculate the distribution factor here you need to take joint b take the joint b here and from b you have b a then you have b d and then you have b c these three are the members 
isn't it so from b for a ba what is the stiffness directly you can write it down for member ba the stiffness already we have written that is 4 ei by l so 4 ei by l you can calculate it through relative stiffness no problem or through stiffness doesn't matter at all so and for kbd it's once again 4 ei by l and for kbc it's a 3 ei by l 3 ei by l now if you if you will add all this obviously it will come 11 ei by l then if you will calculate the distribution factor as you know the distribution factor formula is what how you will calculating distribution factor the distribution factor is k by summation of k so here if you will calculate the distribution factor that is k by summation of k stiffness divided by summation of stiffness that is 4 ei by l divided by 11 ei by l 4 EI by L divided by 11 EI by L. So if you do that, you will be getting 0 0.4. 0 .4. You will be getting 0 0.364. Just a second, I will just calculate. 4 EI 4 divided by 11, you will be getting 3.364. Yes. <clears throat> 0 0.364. Now this will be same for this 0 0.364 and here if you calculate it will be coming 0 0.272 0 0.272 Now see here this is the distribution factor and what what distribution factor tells us what distribution factor tells us if you are applying a moment at that joint how it will be distributed to other members what distribution factor says? Yes, it is possible uh, to get uh, three, four answers. Yes, you are right. So here, here if you see what distribution factor says that that how the how this m will be distributed in member B A, B D, and B C. So now if you are applying m if you are applying m so for member a b if i will draw just member a b here if i will draw the a b how much moment will be coming to this location that is 0.364 times of m that's all 0.364 times of m will be coming as the as per their stiffness now now as you know there is one more concept that is carryover factor and as you know if you are applying a moment if you are applying a moment at some property in a property cantilever if you are applying a moment so half of the moment will be shifted towards the fixed end so here also this is a joint so if you are applying the moment this this moment will be shifted to the fixed end half of the moment and that is 0.364 m divided by 2 if you do that will come around 0.12 m and that 0.12 m will be the correct answer this is the moment at a so i know this is a very large problem though i have taken it so that you will try to understand from this concept anything can be added though i have taken it but from this concept these concepts stiffness concept rotation at joint concept or moment for so it means you need to be very clear about few things if you are uh, you know expecting such kind of problem so what is stiffness what is relative stiffness what is distribution factor isn't it and uh, what is carryover factor and how to utilize it then what is you know that you know for a prop cantilever beam what will be the slope so these things you need to keep in a mind to solve this kind of problem did you get that so here only option c is wrong and all other are correct option c is only wrong and all other are correct only did you get that coming to the next one Coming to the next one, if you have any doubt, please let me know. Coming to the next one, which of the following is or are displacement method? Now this one is easy, not much calculation is needed, isn't it? So which of the following is our displacement method? So as you know, for a displacement method, for a displacement method, 
displacement method. Which one is the displacement method? Obviously, Canis method is the displacement method. Unit load is a force method. Force method. And moment distribution is displacement. So just leave this because this is the correct one. Then column analogy is a force method. Force method. So this is this was very easy problem. Although I have taken side as I told you that some easy and some tough problem may occur, may come. It's buffering. Is it buffering for all of you? Is it buffering for all of you? So here only these two are the correct answer, which is the canis and the moment distribution, the unit load, column analogy, Castigliano, then virtual work. So all these uh, methods are flexibility. All these methods are the force method. Canis, moment distribution, slope deflection. These all are displacement methods. Coming to the next problem. Now this is this problem is from railway. So for all of you, I am telling you that a railway you have only one chapter, that is only geometric design geometric design and for airport you have one chapter that is a basic runway length and its correction so only these two chapter you if you'll add it is it's like you know it's very less so grab the opportunity read these two chapters very carefully because that is for sure you will be getting the question so why you want to leave that every time last time also in 2020 also there were a problem from railway and airport so it's better no only read the two chapter and surety you will get the surety of getting at least two to three marks isn't it so please don't avoid these two these two are i think very important because this is very easy and very less to uh, you know prepare so go to the channel in grade up app and whatever the free classes i have taken just go through the railway classes also i have taken few of the classes so just let's solve it for a four degree railway curve and a rolling gradient of one. Okay, this is one in one in one fifty. Just a second. This is one in one fifty on a BG on a BG track on a BG track. Which of the following is are true for a four degree railway curve and rolling gradient of one in one fifty on a BG track? Which of the following is are true? So to 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 solve this. First of all, he is asking about the radius of the curve. So now radius of the curve for a 4 degree, you must know one thing. That is for a railway, the degree and radius relation, the degree and a radius relation is the degree and the radius relation. So R will be 1750 divided by D for a railway, for a railway, whereas for highway, generally R will be 1720. Approximately, I am telling 1720 by D for highway. For highway. Whereas degree is what? Angle subtended at the center of the curve by some specific chord. So here they have utilized 30.5 meter chord and here they have used 30 meter chord. So whenever they will specify that okay 20 meter chain or 20 meter uh, was used as a to get the degree of the curve then you need to calculate once again these two formula will not be applicable in any sense but if they are telling just railway curve or highway curve you can utilize these two now just delete delete all this okay so this is one in 150 this is track and here for the railway, we have a radius equal to 1750 divided by D. Already we have 1750 divided by degree is how much? 4. So how much you will get if you will calculate? Just I have calculated uh, somewhere. Somewhere I think I have calculated it. Okay, this is 437.5. 437.5 meter. This is 4. So the radius will be 4375 meter. Now for the other option, the Versine for 30.5 meter chord. So Versine, Versine is what? Versine is L square by 8R. And for a short, you know, if you suppose sometimes if you are not able to remember this, you can just easily do it. This, you know, the chord, just draw this. 
this will be you know this is one something v u just tell then the whole this length from the center is 2r and these two you can write down that is l by 2 and l by 2 this is the verse sign so from property of circle if you will write down l by 2 into l by 2 will be equal to v into 2r minus v isn't it so 2r minus v you can write down as a 2r so here if you will calculate v will be l square by 8r sometime if you will forget it is very easy to get once again v equal to l square by 8r so if you will do l square by 8r here write down L value that is chord length already they have given that is 30.5 meter so 30.5 square divided by 8 into R R already you have calculated that is 437 437.5 and the value is uh, you have if you have calculated just uh, tell me point yes Patel you are right 0 0.2657 0 0.2657 yes you are you are right 0.265 now the other one is a grade compensation so as railway is telling for a bg track the grade compensation is 0 0.04 percent per degree of the curve if you are introducing if you are introducing a curve for one degree introduction of the curve you need to compensate you need to compensate the ruling gradient by 0 0.04 percent now you have a four degree curve in this problem you have a 4 degree curve in this problem so what you need to do it so grade compensation will be grade compensation will be grade compensation compensation will be 4 into 0. Point, sorry 0. 0.04 that will be 0.16% so this much of the grade must be compensated if you are introducing a four degree curve as per Indian Railway. Now coming to the last option, the permissible gradient. Now already we know that the 0.16% is what? It must be compensated, right? So now what will be the grade? So the final grade, the ruling gradient is what? 1 in 150 and that 1 in 150 must be compensated. So the permissible one will be permissible. So permissible gradient here permissible gradient permissible gradient grad i will just write down will be 1 in 150 if you are making it in percentage that multiply by 100 and it must be compensated by 0 0.16 and how much you will be getting that will come around 0 0.508 or 9 something isn't it 50 maybe you can take it as a 0.51 percent and if you'll convert in a 1 by ratio that is 1 by 197 all around something like that 1 by 197 so this is also correct if you are compensating the gradient see the steepness has reduced that is what the meaning of the compensating now earlier was 1 in 150 that 1 in 150 you have compensated the gradient now this is 1 in 197 so steepness has been reduced the steepness can you see that the steepness has been reduced here because you have introduced a two degree or oh sorry four degree of curve here did you get that so all the options are correct in this uh, question five in five number question a b c d all the options are correct but can you see here can you see here I mean, and imagine you uh, you for this kind of prob problem you need a knowledge of degree and radius you need a knowledge of versine and uh, relation of uh, you know versine and uh, that chord length and radius relation then you need a knowledge of grade compensation so i hope this is uh, this you are getting it that they can prepare this kind of problem and you need to identify if it is too much of time taking then uh, you must think about it coming to the another problem which of the following are true for a geometric design of a bg track which of the following are true for a geometric design of BG track? A great compensation 0.04% per degree. Is it true? Can you write down in a comment box? I, I can come now, I think. So problem number six, please write down in a comment box which of the following are true for the geometric design of BG track. Great compensation is 0.04% per degree. Is it true? Yes, we have just seen that great compensation for a BG track is this one much only minimum gradient in yard is provided for a drainage purpose what do you say that what do you say about this minimum gradient in yard is provided for drainage purpose obviously either you are standing in an ap apron where you are you no know, or 
where you are uh, you know that uh, plane is parking for uh, baggage and unbaggage and all or you are in a yard where your train is parking so in anywhere you are parking your car train or plane whatever you are parking you don't need a slope you don't need a slope otherwise it will require an extra effort if you are in this direction you need to start and sometime it can roll back also so to avoid this we are reducing the slope but for a yard section where where the drainage is also a requirement you cannot say that i will make the yard line very horizontal so some minimum requirement of the gradient will be there so that is how he is telling he is telling that minimum gradient in a yard is provided for drainage that's true what about the option c yes 1 in 400 is uh, the maximum and 1 in 1000 provided for the minimum one yes vijay you are right what about the option c the momentum gradient is steeper than the rolling gradient can you tell me is it true option c is it true or uh, is it false just write down in your comment box for option c option c is it true or false the momentum gradient is can you tell me the option c is uh, true or false momentum gradient gradient is steeper than rolling gradient so here the momentum gradient if you see as you know the ruling gradient is what that is the gradient where there will be not much you know compensation in your uh, speed so momentum is something which has a more than which has a gradient more than the ruling gradient and to overcome the momentum gradient you need a falling gradient so that your vehicle that is a train will acquire some momentum which will help once again to overcome the steeper than the ruling gradient the gradient which is steeper than the ruling gradient and that is how we are calling that momentum gradient so obviously this is true this is true the momentum gradient has momentum gradient is steeper than the rolling gradient now the last one is also true the maximum degree allowed is 10 degree 10 degree uh, in a bg track please in a bg track okay already written bg track no problem so maximum maximum degree which is allowed is a uh, 10 degree that's true so this kind of problem will be very easy if you know this uh, small small concept if theoretical problems are coming it will be sometimes easy but if numerical problems are coming it will be uh, lengthy you must uh, you must understand that maybe you have to solve lot of things so theoretical theoretical one if you know it will be convenient and easy for you to solve now coming to the another problem which of the following factor influence the maximum permissible speed which of the following factor influence the maximum permissible speed on bg curved railway track bg curved railway track which of the following factor influence the maximum permissible speed which of these options are true which which of the is options will affect the maximum permissible speed on bg track can you tell me a b c d or b c d or c d which one will be the answer correct answer can you write down please write down in a comment box and i will just see and i will just tell you how to do that yes vijay all are true okay varsha is telling 7 a b c d or a b c d is true okay so you have seen maybe to calculate the e you have a v okay i will write down in uh, your format only that is gv square by 127r you know that that is the formula for you know calculating the super elevation and in fact if i will write down not in this way in fact if i will write down in other way oh sorry if i will write down in other way that is okay instead of writing all i will just write down actual actual cant and cant deficiency if you will add these two you will be getting the maximum speed isn't it are you getting my point so to get the maximum speed we are allowing a cant deficiency isn't it so now here for a cant deficiency where is that oh it's not here so now you can save directly here this is a cant this is gauge this is radius so the allowable maximum speed obviously will be related to gauge length isn't it if you see v is equal to if you do so v will be under root of all these things will be coming so gauge is also there degree of curve as you can see if r is involved degree is involved 
so this is also true allowable super elevation so now allowable super elevation whatever that is the actual super elevation whatever it is allowed so ca is also applicable so these three are true but how come this ruling gradient will be true ruling is the one where there will be not much the speed will not be affected much so it is a gradient which will be already provided so it's the maximum permissible speed is not dependent on the ruling gradient did you get him are you getting my point on a curve the maximum permissible speed is not dependent on the ruling gradient in fact you are you are compensating the ruling gradient if you are introducing the curve it's opposite side you please try to understand it in other way actually you are compensating the ruling gradient you are not compensating the velocity so velocity is actually not dependent on the ruling gradient so only these three factors will affect the velocity maximum permissible speed on the uh, broad gauge track not the ruling gradient did you get that so this is not the correct option now coming to the last problem you can see which of the following statement is are true for a pg track just read it carefully can deficiency is useful to determine the maximum permissible speed as i was telling in previous slide that ca plus cd will be equal to v sorry oh max if you are putting the cd that can deficiency which is allowed the can deficiency then it is okay to determine the maximum permissible speed can deficiency is useful yes this is true so first option is true can't excess is used to determine the minimum permissible speed now this is you need to think you need to think can't excess is used to determine minimum minimum permissible speed yes it is because as you know you have one thing that is equilibrium now if any train can run at this slope this is suppose v at some 80 now if some train if you are asking which has to run here which has a speed of v120 it will be under can deficiency but some train if they are running and it has they have a if they have a speed of v50 it means it means that v50 that 50 speed of the student was supposed to run at this slope in a curve the 50 speed of the train was supposed to run at this slope but instead of that you are telling that you please go to this slope this is one you have, which you have constructed just try to understand i don't know how many of you have studied this this is the one which you have constructed in the site if you will go to the site maybe if, suppose this is constructed now this is for 80 80 kmph of your train this is the super elevation which you have constructed now if suppose a 50 kmph a 50 kmph train is running on this track but actually if you see the 50 for a 50 kmph train the super elevation will be lesser than that isn't it the super elevation will be obviously lesser than that so this is the super elevation requirement this was the requirement for v50 but instead it was running here so this is the excess this is known as can't excess so obviously this can't excess you cannot provide you cannot provide too much otherwise it will come down the train will slide down did you get are you getting the point so can't excess decides what will be the minimum speed of the train on particular constructed actual can't is it okay for all of you so can't excess is also correct now what about the dynamic uh, so dynamic gauge is the center to center distance between the track yes this is also true if you have a track if you have a track you can see here if you have a track so the this distance we are calling it as gauge actually and this we are calling it as a track gauge whereas center to center if you are taking the distance will be calling it as dynamic gauge okay coming to the so this one is also correct so uh, fourth option the pressure pressure on inner actually is just the pressure on inner and outer wheel of the train in a curved track is same at equilibrium speed yes 
this is true as i was explaining here as i was explaining here the same concept if you have a constructed constructed for if you have constructed a super elevation for 80 80 kmph train speed now if 120 people will come 120 was supposed to run at this super elevation but although you have constructed this super elevation and there will be only one super elevation on the side now you cannot construct 2 3 4 super elevation for different different speed so if 120 speed people are coming they also have to run in this only so higher speed train if running at this position can't access oh sorry can't deficiency will be required now what about the same speed train if they are running for the same speed train if they are running so outer centrifugal force and the inner force both will be balanced and it is constructed and designed for the same 80 kmph so obviously the pressure in the inner and the outer wheel the pressure in the inner and the outer wheel for the same 80 that is equilibrium speed at equilibrium speed the inner and outer wheel the pressure will be same if now out if some train with a 180 180 uh, 120 speed if they are going to run what will happen the centrifugal force will increase as the centrifugal force will increase the outer pressure on the outer wheel will also increase isn't it so that is how it's working instead if suppose 50 kmph is coming so if 50 kmph is running here the inner force will be more and what will happen the pressure on the inner wheel will be more did you get that so here the pressure on the inner and outer of wheel of the train obviously that will be same for a equilibrium speed so that's all for today and uh, i think you have learned a lot and you can please come and join me on a grade up app and uh, i will be taking class uh, monday i will be taking class at um, morning at 10 am then at uh, 8 at 7 pm i'm uh, taking class that is all the courses series i have already taken tomorrow from tomorrow i think from a grade up yes from tomorrow i'll be taking a class on strength of material at 7 pm those who are preparing for engineering services aim paper 1 and please like and share and press the bell icon button if you have liked this session please like and share so that actually these things encourages us of after the class also i will go and i will just look and i will see if i have made so many of effort to for all of you if i see the like and share obviously i will make another another you know series another point of view i will bring more and more for all of you so that's how you can encourage any of the faculty so so engineering services for paper 1 those who are interested to prepare for prelims you can join for 2021 then uh, vision 2021 batch is going on and uh, there is a grade up super as i told you and you where you will get unlimited access to all structured live course mock test and it is a very much interesting for all of you if you will get this thank you all of you have a good day